be with you and a warm welcome to you as always from all of us here at Paris Court with Kilbride. There is a skip in my step today and even though the sun isn't shining when this is being recorded, around me and above me I am surrounded by growth. I decided the other day on a walk that this is by far the best time of the year because everything is stretching forth into life and midsummer things start to turn a little and you'll notice the odd leaf falling but not now this time of year we are in a profusion is that the word of growth and it is the best time of year for what I wanted to talk to you about today on Rogation Sunday by the way no better Sunday to talk about it I wanted to talk about green light. But first, and as always, we pause wherever we may be to acknowledge the presence of the Christ with us now, as he always is, and to pray.
hear these words from the book of Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place so that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb did the ice come forth? And who has given birth to the hoarfrost of heaven? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, here we are? Is it by your wisdom that the hawk soars and spreads its wings towards the south? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes its nest on high? It has come to my attention that the older I get, the more fascinated and childlike I become about the created order. And it doesn't matter what size of a creature or a plant or even the vein of a leaf I'm looking at. It's this compulsion to absorb and it's just marvellous. And it occurred to me during the week that science and creation should not ever be set apart from theology or divinity. We talk a lot in this square about God, the creator of all that is. And you know that you have in me somebody particularly who finds God in nature. And I'm wondering, are there many people out there who do? And I suspect there are. So I want to talk a little bit today about the place that I go uh, after a rough day or perhaps a grief within the parish or something that might be challenging in the role of rector. Um, but this can open out into all our lives because we have all got the same human experiences. I go into a place of green light. That means placing myself deliberately among trees. And this time of year, as mentioned, is possibly the best type of or time of year to do this. In a forest, by a river, in your back garden, you want to see the green light underneath this tree. To place yourself in the energy of the created order, in the energy of living things, is to refresh yourself, to refresh your soul to bestow upon you the gift of the proof of a creator because you cannot look at the hairs on the stem of a daisy for example and not believe that there is an, an intrinsic design behind all this it is the footprints or the finger marks of god in everything that we perceive
if we cannot um, feel the energy of green light that comes from being among living things, perhaps then within our own capacity to imagine what God is, we can imagine this energy as well, this divine force that perpetuates this earth and keeps it revolving, keeps it moving, keeps the seasons changing and everything coming into life. Perhaps we can imagine the energy of green light surrounding us. So the first thing I would recommend we do today is place ourselves within that green light. Find a place that you love outdoors um, and surrounded by living things. The second is to imagine the energy if you cannot feel it for yourself because it is certainly there. They say that the energy of a tree um, expands out to the very width of its branches. So if you can understand that, there is a force field of energy of living life around a tree. And it's this energy that I invite you to imagine is embracing you as you walk or as you sit in the created order. Brother Lawrence lived, I think, in the 17th century. And he had a conversion moment as a younger man. He one day says he was looking at a tree in winter, just observing the stark nature of a bare tree in winter. And it suddenly rushed in. He had an aha moment with God, this divine force. He recognised that the tree was patiently waiting to be reborn again the following spring that the creator of all that is was even at work within its silence as it waited for new life. Brother Lawrence then went on to imagine the presence of God on such a regular basis that God's presence was as normal to him while he was washing dishes in the sink as it was when he was receiving the Holy Eucharist. The book of nature compiled by Barbara Mahoney was inspired not only by Brother Lawrence, but by the fact that she could see and envisage that there was sacred script in the most natural things in this world. She writes, was there an actual thing a book filled with pages of nature's wonderments? And if so, why would anyone, be they rabbi or scholar or priest, be offering up commentary? How had I missed it? This book that I sensed was not on your everyday field guide, but something so awe-infused it comes with capital letters. And so this author has put together a book that is filled with observations on nature, likening them to be the sacred script of God in his created order. As I've now had this realization that something within my heart is calling me to do a similar thing than what Barbara did, Perhaps that can open out into um, worshipping God. So perhaps that and what I'm hoping to do is to organise a little field trip 
where we read a piece of scripture, we might say a prayer, um, we go off with ourselves on our own for half an hour with maybe a notebook or, or a phone to take a photograph of something that truly moves us. This is an unsaid prayer. The being, the doing, the gardening, the digging, the caring for this planet, the breathing in the green light, the immersing yourself in it, it's all a prayer of thanksgiving and appreciation. And that in itself is nurturing us to nurture this wonderful creation that we call God's because he is the creator of all living things. Find yourself a place if you haven't already got one even something as small and back garden as this. Find yourself a way of stilling yourself down so that you can be open to either feeling or imagining the green energy of life around you and allow yourself to breathe it in. Allow it to still you and to calm you because God is in this too. <laughs>